All right, we're, we're moving back to the key topic one, equipment requirements. It kind of ties in. Uh, let's see what we have here. Uh, if you want to check the Part 80 certification, there is going to be an, uh, a faceplate on your radio equipment, which will have the FCC identification number. You can check that on the internet. And uh, the first question is, what is a requirement of all marine transmitting apparatus used aboard United States vessels? A, only equipment that has been certified by the FCC for Part 80 operations is authorized. Uh, B, equipment must be type accepted by the U.S. Coast Guard for maritime mobile use. C, certification must be made by an international maritime organization. Or D, programming of all maritime channels must be performed by a marine radio operator. Uh, so what is the requirement for the uh, apparatus? Is there going to be a requirement? It's basically only use the equipment that has been certified by the FCC for Part 80 operations. Um, and we did kind of briefly look at those two certification requirements. Uh, another quick look at 203A. That was authorization of transmitters for licensing. Um, so basically it does say that each transmitter must be certified by the commission for part 80 operations. So if you're going to be transmitting, uh, you have to have approved equipment or certified equipment. The procedures for actual certification do somewhat vary used to be that you would actually have your specific equipment certified but for the newer models uh, if you are actually uh, using it according to their approved method then you're not going to have to have to have any special certifications When transmitting equipment is authorized for use by a station uh, in, in the marital, I'm sorry, what transmitting equipment is authorized for use by a station in the maritime services? So what type of equipment? Uh, transmitters that have been certified for the manu by the manufacturer for maritime use? No, it doesn't sound bad. B, unless specifically exempt exempted, only transmitters certified by the FCC for Part 80 operations. Well, that sounds even better. C, equipment that has been inspected and approved by the U.S. Coast Guard. No, that's not actually, the Coast Guard doesn't do our inspections. Or D, transceivers and transmitters that meet all the, and we're looking at an international union, uh, requirements or specifications for use so basically to keep with uh, what we've been looking at and since we tore part 80 apart several times um, either a or b is going to be a good answer uh, and i'm going to say because they did use the words uh, transmitter or cert transmitter certified and i believe that ties in exactly with the language we saw here transmitter must be certified uh, the first couple lines of this regulation I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this transmitter certified so B which kind of ties in with the first answer part 80 
What equipment is programmed to initiate transmission of distress alerts and calls to individual stations? Uh, so the equipment itself is programmed to initiate the call, not necessarily by you. So it's going to be a, a program that initiates the call. And do we recall what that was? I'll give you a hint, it is on channel 70. Is that the Navtech, the GPS, the DSC controller, or the scanning watch receiver? No, that is the DSC controller. And certainly in the VHF, it operates at 156.525 megahertz. And there's a similar DSC controller for the medium frequency. Yeah, without the need for picking up the microphone. Small passenger vessels that sail 20 to 150 nautical miles from the nearest land must have what additional equipment? All right, so you're going to be what? The, what is that? C area A2. You're a little further out. You're probably, if you're at 20, you're going to get the VHF signals, but. At, you're not only going to you're not going to get a much past 40 so what extra equipment are you going to have to have uh, are you going to need uh, a or b which is the satellite equipment um, are you going to need c the aircraft transceiver that transmits at 121.5 megahertz which is vhf uh, which isn't going to necessarily go to 150 miles. Or you're going to need the medium or high frequency single sideband transceiver. And that's basically what we've uh, learned that medium and high frequency does go out further and it's got its own uh, uh, system for distress and safety calls. So yes, uh, as you get into A2, which is 20 miles to 100 nautical miles. It does require the medium and high or high frequency, usually just medium. High frequency isn't really on any of the list, but the equipment does monitor it, but I can't find a mandatory requirement other than that one section that said all um, channels that, that have to do with distress. Okay, and we did see when we went through the equipment of each one takes us a little further out. And C area A4 is the polar reason, regions. High seas would be more than 100, and, 100 nautical miles out, which I believe is the equivalent of approximately 120 um, statue miles. All right, I was going to cover uh, shipboard transmitters using the F3E emission. We know the F stands for FM, and the E is going to be kind of a voice. So FM voice, um, three indicates, I, I believe it's an analog information is contained. It may not exceed what carrier power? Uh, what carrier power? And I might have to do element one or key topic one maybe a third time um, because I've I went and lost this section so is it 500 250 100 watts or 25 watts and uh, I, if I relaunch the poll to make sure that I'm on the right question All right, we're, we're not exactly sure on this, so let me um, move it on. They say 25 watts. All right, it's a 215. I I don't know if I would have found that. 
，好、啊、，Okay, it's general technical standards. Uh, transmitter power. Okay, yeah, it would have taken me a while to just uh, organically come to that. So let me see what that does say.、Uh, okay, we did take a look at this, and we did also look at、uh, G. The carrier power、uh, should be at least eight, but not more than twenty-five watts. So I think it was in the last section we skimmed through this one. So. At a minimum of eight and a maximum of twenty-five, and that's in when you're operating in the VHF band, which is in effect what FM voice is going to be. You also must be capable of reducing the carrier power to one watt or less. VHF shore stations may run up to. Fifty watts of power, coast station, coast guard, even more. All right, what is the minimum transmitter power level required by the FCC for a medium frequency transmitter aboard the compulsory fitted vessel? All right, so compulsory fitted vessel.、Uh, me, uh, what do you need for your medium frequency?、Um, is it A, a hundred watts single sideband suppressed carrier, or B at least sixty watts PEP. C the power predictably needed, or D at least twenty five watts delivered into a fifty ohm effective resistance. So I believe this one is a sixty watt PEP. It is. Where is it? Eight oh seven and eight fifty. Eight oh seven's gone, so it's got to be eight fifty five. Eight fifty five. I guess it's just the radio telephone transmitter, and I see the requirement already in D two. The output power is not less than sixty watts peak envelope power for、uh, transmissions on the medium frequency and for basically the the J three E voice type transmission on the. On the medium frequency、uh, <laughs> channel that I'm not that familiar with, so there's our 60 watt PEP. Yeah, you can see they're all over the board on this. So sometimes you just have to know your your regular FM voice is 25 watts maximum, and your medium and high frequency is 60 watts PEP peak envelope power. All right. I guess that'll do for now.